what is up? <laughs> what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, for those of you that um, have been following my journey, I really missed you guys. And for those of you that are new to my channel, hello and welcome. Um, so I basically did a bikini prep series last year where I counted my macros religiously. So for my old subscribers, um, probably wondering why I don't count my macros anymore and that is probably why you clicked on this link, either that or you just want to see what I eat in a day. So I have been counting macros for probably about four years now and the reason I stopped counting my macros now is because it's not healthy. Wait, what? Got you rave about it. Before you go all bananas on me, let me explain what I mean by that. Now, whether you're following a flexible diet, a clean eating diet, a keto diet, a paleo diet, whatever the case may be, any dieting of any kind that requires you to pre-plan your meals, to weigh your, weigh your food, to um, obsess over food, to think about food, um, to not really listen to your body when it comes to food, is not going to do your mental health any good in the long run. Don't get me wrong, um, I 100% believe that if you have a goal, um, like competing for instance, um, that definitely requires a very structured eating regime. But for the everyday person and for everyday living, dieting can take a mental toll. Counting macros has done so much good for me. Like I 100% recommend it for my clients during prep um, or if they have a goal in mind, like if they want to lose a certain amount of weight by some event that they have on. Um, definitely recommend it. Like it taught me about uh, portion sizes, it taught me about um, calories in my food, it taught me about micro micronutrients and micronutrients in my food, it taught me about balance, it taught me that eating out won't, won't harm my, um, me reaching my weight loss goals and um, it taught me that it's okay to eat what's considered as bad um, as this also won't deter me from my weight loss goals. Now, one of the main reasons that I stopped counting my macros is not only for the fact that I don't have a competition in mind right now, um, but for the fact that I'm focusing a lot more on my mental health and my health and well-being. Um, so competition prep is definitely, although I did it in a healthier way, is definitely not something that you should aim for if you're just wanting to get healthy because competition prep is by no means a healthy lifestyle. Um, it's totally fine to do for the short term and that's why um, you do have that on season and off season because it's not healthy to, to stay that lean nor is it to continue dieting like that. Women especially need um, a certain amount of body fat on us for our hormones to prop properly function. So not weighing my food for me um, and religiously tracking has allowed me to have more freedom. Um, I don't know about you guys if you do track your macros at the moment, um, but when I was prepping, I would normally stick to the same foods or the same meals, um, would not be very adventurous or as adventurous as I would have liked to be, um, purely for the reason that um, it meant I had to track the food. So I had to enter it in and find it and whatnot. And to me, time is precious. So I didn't want to waste my time doing more of that. So I did used to stick to the same kind of foods and the same meals a lot during my prep for convenience as well. But now I find myself, because I'm not tracking, I find myself including more variety and um, eating less packaged stuff because obviously on the packages it already has all the macronutrients for you. Um, so I'm definitely finding that I am getting a lot more nutrients for my food because I'm eating a lot more variety and I'm spending less time on my phone and on my fitness pal and um, less time planning, less time scrolling through food porn and more time on listening to my body and um, 
I've become so much more in tune with my body by listening to it. I eat when I'm hungry and eat when I'm craving. And although I did that during my prep, um, I ate when I was hungry during prep. But during prep, all my meals were pre-planned the prior day. So I barely ever listened to my body. I barely ever listened to what I was craving. Um, I just ate what my next meal was. So when I would get hungry, it would be like, okay, it's time for meal number two, um, which was already pre-planned. Um, but now that I'm not tracking, um, I don't follow a plan. I listen to my body every single day and every single day is different depending on what I'm feeling like. Um, I eat more on some days and I eat less on other days. I find that during competition prep or any kind of dieting really that when you pre-plan your meals and you have a very structured eating plan, you forget to listen to your body. Um, you lose sight of what your body is actually needing and you lose sight of being in tune with your body. I know that for me, I found myself that coming out of competition prep and switching to intuitive eating, it was a struggle at the start because, because I mentally know how much I'm eating um, just by looking at the food. I would get to the end of the day and be like, oh my goodness, like I definitely haven't had enough protein today. I better get that protein in me. And I would sometimes eat even though I wasn't hungry just because I know that I hadn't eaten enough protein. And then I would feel worse afterward because I didn't really need that food. I was not hungry. So it took me a while to adjust. And the moment that I realized that I was eating because I thought that's what I needed to be doing um, and I started focusing more on what my body was actually telling me I became so much happier and uh, my body was definitely thanking me for it so I definitely think that that is one of the problems that a lot of competitors have post competition is the fact that they forget to listen to their body and they just eat how they are used to eating or they think that that's how they should be eating and um, when the weight gain comes they freak out and then they revert back to dieting so learning to listen to your body and become in tune with your body I think is very vital for your long-term health um, and just in general like your long-term happiness because I have counted macros for so long I have a really good indication of how much I'm eating anyway um, same as because I do come from a nutrition background, I study nutrition, I have my bachelor in um, nutrition and health promotion. I can basically look at a food um, or look at a meal and know how much I'm consuming. Um, so for example, I know that a medium sized apple, if I ate that, that would be around 70 calories and um, 15 grams of carbs. Um, there's definitely still days that I do use my fitness pal and I enter everything that I've eaten for that day at the end of the day just to see if my intuition is on track um, and for the most part of it I found that it is. So basically the way that I have been eating as I mentioned I have been listening to my body so I've been eating um, intuitively. Oh I can't believe I got that word right it took me like six goes last time I tried to film this. Intuitively, intuitively, uh, intuitively, intu, I don't know how to say that word. Intu, intuitively, oh my goodness. So for those of you that clicked on this link to find out how I'm eating right now, I'm about to show you what um, my intuitive eating looks like. Um, so that's coming up next for you. Remember that this is just one of my days of eating and like I mentioned before every single day is different so I'm not going to pre-plan this day I'm just going to go with the flow and listen to my body and show you exactly how I eat and what that looks like and I'm also going to show you guys if I do end up using it um, some of the foods that I have included now that I'm eating a lot more variety and I'm going to explain to you guys why I have included them and why they're good for you and why you should include them too. Um, so that is coming up next. Uh, enjoy. I always start my day with one teaspoon of soaked chia seeds, which are a really great source of fibre and omega-3s. 
and some apple cider vinegar and lemon which are great for digestion and kickstarting your metabolism. Next up I'm going to show you my delicious high fiber high protein breakfast but first coffee. Breakfast is my macro friendly protein brownie which I posted on my YouTube already. I have since perfected the recipe which I will post in the description box but these brownies are only 16 grams of carbs with a massive 7 grams of fiber. Getting enough fiber in your day is really essential in making sure that you keep your bowels healthy. I always add a healthy fat source to my breakfast and generally keep my breakfast low carb high fat. I find for me this works the best because it keeps me fuller for longer. This birthday cake spread, if you guys have not tried it, I highly recommend it. It is amazing. To finish it off, I top it off with my chocolate chip peanut butter protein ice cream. This recipe is in my bikini prep series in episode 5. My next meal is following the Buddha bowl craze. I generally mix it up, but this time around I have got falafel, pumpkin and spiced chickpeas for my carb sources. I've got chickpeas and hummus for my protein sources and avocado and hummus for my fat sources. So this is a really nutrient dense dish um, with lots and lots of micronutrients and fiber. I've got spinach in there for my iron and some extra snow peas for added greens. I've also added in sauerkraut which is a great superfood to add for gut health. I've topped it up with this amino acid teriyaki sauce which is a fermented sauce also great for gut health. Alright next up I'm going to be making my superfood smoothie. I call it a superfood smoothie because I add so many nutrients to it and oh hello the current oxygen magazine and look who is in here I might have placed that there so that I can show you guys because I'm so excited about it I have a five page spread in the current oxygen magazine now that is pretty freaking cool anyway back to the smoothie so the base I use is almond milk but you can use any milk that you like then I add in frozen banana and blueberries for extra vitamins, a little bit of cacao which is high in antioxidants and is known as a mood booster, a squeet which is something I've added in recently but it's really high in nutrients and helps maintain your blood sugar levels and it's got kind of like a honeycomb caramel flavour so I really like it. Maca powder is something I have included to help balance my hormones. It's got kind of like a nutty butterscotch flavour, so it goes really great in smoothies. Cinnamon, which is really great for stabilising your blood sugar levels, and it kind of just balances out the sweetness of this smoothie. This is PB2, which is just a powdered peanut butter. I love all things peanut butter, but I will be adding a different fat source to this smoothie. I always add protein powder to my smoothies because it helps me keep fuller for longer. This prana on Himalayan salty caramel protein is the best vegan protein I've ever had. And then this delicious peanut butter chocolate shake is my favorite in the giant sports. So I'm going to be mixing the both of them to create kind of like a salted chocolate peanut butter flavor. So I ended up changing my mind after I smelt the Himalayan salted caramel protein and decided to go for a more vanilla salted caramel rather than the chocolate salted caramel flavor. I'm all about listening to what your body is craving, so I went from craving chocolate to craving salted caramel, so we're going to go with that. Some dates for added sweetness to the smoothie. Dates are also a really great source of fiber. A dash of Himalayan salt to balance out the sweetness and some baby spinach. I always add baby spinach to my smoothies because you can't really taste it and it's just an easy way to add more nutrients. We've got some ice and then we've blended it up and this is the end result. Nice and thick. It doesn't look too appetizing but trust me guys it is amazing. To finish it off I'm going to be adding this paleo granola on the top of my smoothie. I like it because it adds a little bit of a crunch and this is where I'll be getting my healthy fats 
from so it's just a mix of nuts seeds and some freeze dried fruit it is delicious and very nutritious I thought I'd show you guys just how much volume you get out of this smoothie so it's not a very calorie dense smoothie but it's definitely got a lot of volume to it so if you're having a hungry day smoothies are a really great way to fill you up I generally use coconut oil spray when I'm cooking because it is a really great source of healthy fats. Not only that, but coconut oil is one of the few oils that can sustain a higher heat without going rancid like olive oil does. So it is one of the better oils to use when cooking. To make the coconut rice, I use this cauliflower rice which is perfect for adding bulk to your meals. It's only 50 calories for the whole container and has a huge 5 grams of fiber which is essential for healthy digestion. I only used half of the packet when I made it but if you're feeling extra hungry, feel free to use the whole packet. Cauliflower is a great source of vitamin C which helps to support your immune system. I'm adding a dash of Himalayan pink rock salt. Now this is the second time you've seen me add salt to my meals. A lot of people are afraid of salt because they've been told that sodium is bad. But sodium is actually an electrolyte that our body needs. So unless you have high blood pressure or diabetes or anything like that, you shouldn't be too worried about salt as long as you're ensuring you are still consuming enough potassium and water throughout the day. To create that coconut flavour in the rice, I'm adding some coconut cream. Coconut cream is a really great fat source. To finish off the coconut rice, we're going to add just about a teaspoon of stevia, which is a natural sweetener. That's the coconut rice done. Now we're going to move on to the vegetable stir fry. So here I've got broccoli, zucchini and green beans. These are all really high in fiber and very nutrient dense. Whenever I am eating vegetables, I try to eat from the rainbow because every different color has different nutrients in it. I'm going to add in some carrot and some garlic and onion. Garlic and onion are really high in prebiotic fiber, which encourage growth of our healthy gut bacteria and create a strong immune system. They're also known to fight infection, so really great vegetable to add in any dish. Mushrooms are one of the very few foods that include vitamin D. Vitamin D is very essential for building strong bones because it helps to absorb calcium. Mushrooms are also one of the lower calorie vegetables so they're a great way to bulk up your meals. Chili is known to fight inflammation and boost immunity. It also increases thermogenesis which aids in boosting your metabolism and burning fat more efficiently. Next I'm going to add in my pre-cooked garlic chicken breast. Now you can cook this up on the go but I've already pre-made it because I generally cook my proteins in bulk. Um, chicken breast is a really great lean source of protein. I always add protein to my meals to help keep me fuller for longer. I always feel like something sweet after dinner so I generally have a kombucha. Kombucha is just a fermented drink that is great for gut health. I used to have severe digestion issues so my focus has highly been on improving my gut health and hence why I've added in so many fermented foods. Alrighty guys so that is the end of my intuitive eating day. If you did enjoy um, that content and if you did enjoy my little nutrition tips along the way please give this video a thumbs up so that I know um, and then if there's anything else you'd like me to vlog about any questions you may have um, or anything like that I'm always happy to answer them so make sure you post them below so that I know and I will see you next time